It's very important. It's very important. And all you mob that are here that aren't Indigenous and living in our country, good on you. And I hope that you can educate other people from where you, you know, rain from where you work or wherever you live. And um, I hope everyone just, you know, when you march today, march strong. And like that one said before, you got to think of our ancestors because they're here with us. We're still doing it, you know. And we've got to pass it on to our next generation so they keep doing it and keep making us proud because we come from a proud people. Yeah, they try to wipe us out in so, so many ways. You all know that. But we're still here and we'll still be here. We'll never go. It doesn't matter what they try. <laughs> That's our land. Stand up for Mother Nature today. That's all I can say. Thank you. Um, uh, our next speaker, I will get up, um, we'll ask if Ricky Pascoe would like to come up. He's been a part of uh, the Brisbane community uh, for quite some time. Um, My respect to the traditional owners of this country that we now stand on, elders past and present. Today is a sad day for us. This year I found out I was a direct descendant of the Durrick people. The battles of Parramatta and the battles of Prospect were my people. When Captain Cook landed with the first fleet, he chained them up, murdered them, tried to kill all of us all. We're here today. And solidarity to my brothers and sisters, my family in Sydney for marching I advised them to shut that bridge down. Shut it down. Because we're going to let the world know that we are still here. We talk about deaths in custody. 20 years of my life was taken away with my brothers and sisters called the Rock Apes. The coppers in Brisbane used to pour glue on our heads, take us out bush. We used to line up and they used to shut a street off in the valley outside PCs every Friday night. And it'd be stick stones, bottles and us and coppers. Every week they'd chase us and hound us like animals and pull us up in the street and expose us to the public as Aboriginal people. Look down upon us like, like vermin. This police, since invasion, they've been doing the same thing. The acts they act under that are presented in this parliament are just a change of words from the act that was invented in the day. Before 1938, before 1938, there was a case of Jack Coral Mungo in deep water New South Wales where my grandmother was born. We were the, we were the Windeer blacks. The Windeers were the prominent lawyers and the magistrates and the judges. And we were their servants and slaves for the New England area. There was three massacres that I know of, deep water Pies Creek and um, Bolivia, Bluffs Rock and the Mile Massacre during that time after invasion. There was two men that killed a white man and they were let off under that the British had no jurisdiction over Aboriginal law. So they were let off the charge of murder. But since then they changed, changed the law, etc. Many of our people before us fought hard to save our country. But we didn't have guns. And police that walk around our cities today carry those guns and remind us of the massacres in this country, of our ancestors and old people, and our children that were killed and poisoned through that country. I go back there this year for the first time in history 
And the New South Wales Land Rights Act that allows any Aboriginal person to be a member of a land council, which is wrong. And it's dividing Aboriginal people in New South Wales. There's allowing other Aboriginal tribes to come into your country and take over. Well, I'm going back home and I've already written to the member of New South Wales Parliament and the Land Rights Act to amend the membership of land rights land councils in New South Wales and to stop these derogatory processes from happening and stop us, stop them white fellas from dividing us through their acts because it's the acts that they up, up, operate under that are presented in Parliament and passed that allow them to do what they do to us every day. And if you vote for them, you should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, if you come here to celebrate Australia Day in this country, you should be ashamed of yourself. We are here to celebrate our survival. I'm very emotional today because I lost a brother and uh, he, will, he won't be me. He died uh, sitting at the table. Uh, we were getting ready for today. But listen, I'm strong. Um, I stay strong for my people. They bash me, they gas me, they mace me, they put me in cells all my life. They've called me white cunt, give me black eyes. Said you're black now. Took me 49 years to find my home. I'm a proud, negarable, Darug man. And I stand here today for my people in Brisbane. <laughs> for my ancestors and my grandmother. It's that sad that them black fellas down that country took the name of our people up the hill. In history, if you Google Nagarabal, you will see Marlow Hill. They took our name down. And they told lies about our country to get millions of dollars to go and dig up sapphires and put sheep on our country to damage our land. Because sheep don't, don't come in our country. Sheep damages sacred sites. Cattle damage this land. Mining damages this land. So the more and more these white fellas damage our land, the more and more they will wake up the rainbow serpent and our spirits. You see our animals are our totems. Our snakes are getting them. Our spiders are getting them. Well our totems, they're getting them for us. They come here to kill us off. Thank you very much. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Always was, always will be. Aboriginal land. Always was, always will be. Thank you, thank you. Just like everybody else has been saying, you know, today in Sydney, in Melbourne, Adelaide, Perth, Anala, Maribor, Moree, uh, you know, and more, more, uh, and other small communities around the country, and you know, there's mob that are getting out there, you know, and getting on the streets and being seen. I think one of the biggest things we should, you know, um, or we already know today, is not to hold our head in shame, in sadness. We, we shouldn't be walking around today with our head down. It should be held high. Yeah. It should be held high. Because you know, our people, our old fathers, they laid their lives for us. You know, so we should do them justice by keeping our head, by keeping our head held high today. Uh, this next speaker. Uh, comes from uh, the Bales and the Watson family. 
uh, one of the many families you know, that have been a part of the Brisbane Blacks community for so long and many other communities around the country. Um, so I'd just like to ask their young sister up, uh, Lala Bales. What a molly! I'd like to pay my respects to the Indigenous elders in both past and present. My name is Guyala Bales. Um, on my grandfather's side, I come from the Virigabra and Kungaloo Nations up in Theodore. And on my mum's side, I come from the Wanneroo Nations, Bundjalung in Sydney and Singleton. I was born here in Brisbane. I was raised in Redfern. And my whole life, I've been around these um, marches, you know, with my pop, my mum, all my family. And I'm just here to say a poem for you. This is called Don't Judge Me. Thank you. You don't know me. Yet you judge me. Because of the colour of my skin, I'm a thief, I drink, I sin. No, you can't say that to me. I'm Aboriginal and proud to be. You don't even know me, yet you judge me. Well, let me take you back to how we used to be. We didn't drink alcohol, we had nothing like that, you see. We were all strong, no sickness passing on. We were all one people, simply getting along. Then when white settlers came along, they brought disease, pain, animals we didn't even recognise, and you told us to move on. But we fought for our land, for we didn't want our land to be in the white fellas' hands, for their hands were in the wrong. But still, we stood there strong. You tortured, raped, killed our people, but we still stand hand by hand. While mob, we still stand, we died fighting for our land. Since that day, we aren't the same. We hold pain, still game, drink our sorrows away, but we'll all be one again, you'll see. You judge me because of the colour of my skin. Well, let me tell you this. I'm not a thief, I don't drink, I don't sin. My name is Gayala, you don't know me. I'm a Birigabba woman and proud to be, so don't judge me for what you see. Thank you. What a man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my next speaker, um, Annie Gladys. Hello to everybody out there. My name's Warrinkle. I'm a Wapparara writer uh, from the Keppel Islands, and I notice there's a few Wapparara people here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are their voices. Um, and I like a lot of Wapparara people. We are have mixed with other groups like Butchula. We are in other groups, Durrambul. Um I've been marching out for over 50 years. I've been involved in the Murray community for that time. I know most of the people here that have been here for a long, long time. And it really uh, makes me feel really proud to see so many people here today. <laughs> I mean, for the last few marches, we haven't had a really lot of people. And uh, I think with social media, which I'm what for elder on all the pages, you might know me because I'm very... Uh, uh, radical, I get closed down all the time. I've been closed down three times this year. <laughs> Which is very, very sad for a 72-year-old. But, uh, what, you know, why are they going after us old people? How can we hurt anybody? You know, you tell the truth. They can't handle the truth. I was sitting at a bus stop today with my two young grandsons coming to the march. A big lot of Aussies went past with their flags and they start giggling and laughing and... I had to stop myself from doing that to do this, you know. So, you know, it, it's very hard before it's very hurtful. We don't really want to antagonise people. We want people to understand us. And another thing that really irks me at this time is my grandson who uh, wants to go to football this year, the All, all, all Stars. His mum bought him the shirt and when he walked in my door, that big bloody R's on the sleeve. You know, the government is supporting it. They're making Murray's wear this deadly T-shirt with a big R. Now, a lot of us, I don't know if you do or don't, but I don't support recognise. <laughs> you know. So he couldn't wear that shirt today. He had to change his shirt. Now, this is, this is like the uh, Ricky there, who I've known since for 30 years. 
says, we get used and abused. We get to go up against each other. And we've got to get above that. We've got to start saying, no, we won't accept that. We'll be unified. We'll look at each other. We'll trust each other. We'll listen to each other. And we will talk to people. And it's really good to see so many supporters, you know, here today. I would like to say thank you for that too, like other people have said before. And I have got a lot of supporters on my page, a lot of people that are not Indigenous, and I encourage them on my page because... And I sit at bus stops and talk to people, you know? And I think it's so important that our message gets across. And it's really good to see young people like little Bales girls here. Sorry, I forgot your name, darling. Get up and speak. We need more of our young people speaking. And it's also good to see our oldies too. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I'm just going to ask um, Uncle Arnie Murray from Sherberg to come up and have a talk to us all. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, buddy. I'll pay my respects to all the elders, past and present, and to the traditional owners of this land where we all meet. But it, for me, standing here today, and I don't like to say this, but when I see a lot of white people around, we all those black fellas getting together, that makes you makes you proud. Thank you very much for supporting us, eh? I love you, eh? I want to say, like the sisters were talking about, they taking their children away, you know? Still children, stealing their children. You know, the mongrels, they took me away from my grandmother when I was six. They shot me in the fucking dormitory. But I survived, like we all say, we are still here today. And I'm, I'm back in the 70s when I come back, baby. I'm, I'm out for the more, can't just walk anymore. And I'm still here. I love you as well. And God bless you. Thank you very much. Eh? Thank you, Uncle. Just before we go to our next speaker, just tell me, who owns this land? Of Australia, white people of Australia. We don't really want to see you as white people. You know that Miglo mean ghost. But when you turn into some sort of a unhuman thing, we know that you're white, right? And you have to go back to where you come from, right? But the point is, is that going back to where you come from means that you have to come from here. Well, it's like what Brother said to me when Billy got a brother who passed on, right? He said, when they die, brother, uh, in the uh, traps of the uh, coffin, their spirit get caught there. And what they look for is release, and that religion give them release, right? And that constitution blesses their religion to give them release. And they can't get released, they get trapped there. Our spirit can go free anywhere in this country. What I'm trying to say is that debt and custody is a profit-making business in this country. And that's what's been happening in this country. We should not always mourn for our people, right? We look for the strength of our resistance fighters like Dundee, Wimbley, Montara, all our fighters around here and unite that way, right? <laughs> Anger sometimes and, and emergency, for example, right? Sean Coolwell, last year they murdered him, right? On the 26th of October. Yes, I believe his name up. Yes, he's a human being, man, we have relation to Kwanamuka too, right? They married him last year, and they tried to say it was a mentally a stupidity, uh, a depression, disturbance of the family that caused that thing with the Logan's City uh, uh, Medical Center cover up with the fucking cops, as far as I'm concerned. But the point is, is that we had this rally here. The Cornwall people called me out to all of uh, Facebook. Where were you, some of you people? I oh, don't thank you. Right? Because some of you people weren't there. Right? We need people like you to come along. Symbols in our country of all those and vacations really unite people. Man, think of Australia. You got to change that name right to a better name. You got to work out a different way of approach 
to his solidarity and unity. On that day, on the 26th of October last year, one, they had international flight about the refugees, the Syrians, the Palestinians, the Emirates, thousands were over there. One, a sister came and hit me, was the first secretary of the Aboriginal Legal Service here in Brisbane. She came and hit me on the back and said, brother, they're flying our flag over there. Now, why is this so-called disunity unto the understanding that we know that international struggle, we know that the fight, and we should all unite together. Not everyone is in favour of terrorism, but that doesn't mean the Australian public. Colin Barnett, what they're doing over there to the first closure, is the same thing what they're doing in Queensland here. And just in 1985, they've been demanding apartheid acts that were modelled for South Africa. What? That's what they've done here in 1985. You know, dismantle that act. That was an act that was a model for South Africa. I repeat that because racism is the fight for us. It's not just in the people, right? That education of the school children today, what we should have is, just for example, out there in Casey Ridge, they got a Murray school, right? Cool. They got Murray, Murray programs everywhere, a lot of black, gooey stuff everywhere. You know, Obama people in privatization and everything. What we should have in our schools now, and even in the white schools, which we've got some little white schools out in the properties in some places now, we're changing, starting to learn Aboriginal language and that. We need six months, run right, of just strict Aboriginal writings, no fucking English, no broken English, no hawker stuff, right? Strict Aboriginal writing language, typing up the language, right? For our younger people who bump these areas, and who not want to say in their own language groups and go back home and learn English. Because you've got enough television and you've got nice crap there with all that snoopy dot shit there. Right, the other thing is that I want to make is clear is we need to have our own anthem in Australia. We need an Aboriginal anthem that unites with the Eureka, with the Republican, with the people who resist against the establishment because that elegantarian kind of, not love, not the thesis love of economical oppression, no, that humanity love because you got to remember, they always quote to us 100,000 years, 600,000 years, 60,000 years. They always quote these numbers. They play number games. Every number they have is a word. Every word they have in the English is a number, right? And I believe that I'm part of 4,000 to nearly 5,000 Aboriginal people in this country who are published and who are going to be published and who are conquering English for the betterment of our language to write in, to read in, and to come up. That's the revolution. The culture is the revolution, not the fucking politics. Right? That's how we unite our people. And you've got to remember that in the future, you know, all this clapping and all this thank you and God stuff and all this, you know, you've got to remember we've got to live that breathing of our rainbow in our hearts. And that's the only way to defeat this mob in this country. Right? We've got to conquer the English, and to conquer the English, we have to do it in our style, not the Western style that they teach us. The law and the lawyers, they are the criminals. Right? We blame the government all the fucking time. We blame every work in the government. Right? No. It's the lawyers and the barristers in this country that cover up debts in custody, you know that, for millions and millions of dollars. All of the Aboriginal legal service in Rockdale will cover up Dan and York and many other uh, Aboriginal people who've died in debts in custody. Right? Those lawyers are sitting at home, paying off their fucking mortgages, paying off their little new houses and what I've been keeping. They'll teach for their little white boys and their little multicultural boys coming up to dominate us and their uh, elitist fucking system. Right? We don't want that to happen. And the only way we can stop that is to our black culture and revitalizing our culture in our language, right? Language and, and quibbly is very important, yes, but we don't want to live in a, in a lap lap that's years before. We don't want to live in a dream time era like some fucking hippies all the time because hippies come from fucking bourgeois, right? And we don't want to live in a religion that thinks in a ship. When I found that that Captain Logan was flogged by his own people, I rejoiced 
to the fact of dreaming that our people were spilled, moonlight, melon mouse, and when they came up the Dungi River, when they come up the Warrangum River here, right, our Dungi, right, we spilled them. We were frogging those convicts. Today, those convicts have graduated to be a, a trendy, yuppie, and bourgeoisie. And those convicts who we set free back then, they owe us in respect to our liberty and our, 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 our house today, right? I wouldn't believe nothing of Malcolm Turnbull's house of freedom and liberty and democracy from that palace or from any of them over there because we have a right, the Makarara Treaty, the Makarara Treaty, and we have Ferguson and all other Aboriginal people who wrote things down for us in the future. Darren Foley, all of them, Bruce McGuinness, Darlon, Ravna Kwanji, Bay, Don Bay, all of them, they wrote things for us to accumulate for our young people to create a resolution in the future. A revolution of violence we know won't work for us, right? But we've got to unite, right? And thank you very much. Thank you, Uncle. I'm just gonna, just before we go on to the next speaker, I'd just like to remind you all how important it is to stay hydrated today. Even though it is rainy, it is muggy, and it's gonna get hot along the road. So there's water down the back and in the silver van that's gonna be following us. So if you're ever feeling thirsty, just go find them. And also, it's also important that you keep your kids and even eye contact and look out for the elders and each other. We don't I also acknowledge my connection, my direct bloodline connection to um, the Yorta Yorta, oh, sorry, the Yagara people um, and many other um, nations that we are connected to over there on Sherbrooke Island. I would also, I think it's really important, um, especially on Invasion Day, to acknowledge all of those that went before us all of those that have passed fighting for us to be able to still stand here today and have a voice. I'd like to also acknowledge all of our elders that are still here today that continue that fight and continue to teach us and encourage us to still fight. Sometimes I think, I wonder why we, we still have to protest on Invasion Day. And I would like to acknowledge each of you for coming. You know, sometimes I think those that come are those that know, and we're trying to educate the masses of this country, and that's the difficult thing. You know what? In the lead up to Invasion Day, I've become so exhausted. I'm actually just so mentally drained, just dealing with racism every day. And I wanna tell you about what, what happened on Stradbroke Island. Um, last night, um, there was a uh, one of my cousins. He he painted this huge, big Aboriginal flag on the side of a um, mining conveyor belt that takes the the sand off of Stradbroke Island and the mineral off of Stradbroke Island. He did that, and he made our community so proud. But last night, some racist idiot painted over it. It makes me sick. That makes me sick. And today he's going to paint back over it because he's going to say that we're still here. If you go over to Stradbroke Island today, there are Aboriginal flags flying all over Stradbroke because we are still here. My father, he couldn't make it up today, but you know what he did last night? He painted a sign and that sign said, you are on Aboriginal land. And he, he put that sign on one of the main roads on Shrebrooke Island with a big flagpole. And he'll sit there. And he might be sitting there on his own now. I want you to give a big shout out to everyone that is protesting, either on their own or in the masses. You know, I got asked um, to write an article for the, the Guardian about what today means to me. And basically, I wrote an article about why I'm so angry and why I express my anger on a day like today. The fact that I have to do that devastates me in 2016. 
the fact that my blood boils when I think about what is still going on, on, the, on in this country makes my blood boil. I want to acknowledge that in 1938, this, was this day was declared the day of mourning and we still remember it as our day of mourning. Um, I want to, anyone that's on social media will know that today hashtags like Australia Day are trending. That hurts me too. And what I would like to encourage all those to do that use Facebook and Twitter and whatever else is to use the hashtag Invasion Day 2016. Because in my heart, I would really love to see something like Invasion Day 2016 trend. Just maybe. So I ask you all to do that. Um, and I want to I wanna just end with reading to you something that is so special to me because, you know, I've recently moved back to country, I've moved back to Stratbrook Island because that was an important step in my journey to start the decolonisation process, to go back to where I come from, to connect to the land and the people again and try my hardest to, to protect it from the, uh, the devastation and the destruction that is happening on my island. And, you know, as I, as I walk around that island and I walk through the bush, I, I think about what my ancestors over 228 years ago would have felt without having anyone, no one, dictating to them how and where they live. And through that feeling, I wanted to feel freedom. And you know, I don't think I'll ever feel it in my lifetime. <laughs> but this is, this is what I wrote in trying to understand what that freedom might be. I'm looking for freedom, wondering if I'll ever get it right, but my eyes, they are so blind. I've never seen nor felt it, but, it, but it's always on my mind. I've always felt so helpless, helpless in the system. The system tries to stop my search, the search for my own freedom. It shuts my eyes and glues them tight. To open them just a little, I really have to fight. And in that fight, I sometimes, only sometimes glimpse the light. But seeing just that glimpse makes my eyes so very sore. For now, I cannot fight, I cannot fight no more. Instead, I'll close my eyes, I'll close them really tight. For now, I'll dream of freedom as I drift into the night. Maybe my dreams will see it. Maybe my dreams will find freedom tonight. Thank you. All right, just before we move on to the next speaker, let's pop up the crowd a bit. Who wanted this land? Who stole this land? Make sure you put them up when you're walking and you're marching today. You make them feel that shame. You make them feel sorry for what they did to our people. Who stole this land? Who owned this land? Deadly, deadly. The next sister I'm going to ask to come and talk to you all today is another war sister. She's going to give us a bit of a poem. Her name's Annika. First of all, I want to pay my respects to the traditional owners that we stand on today. Thank everyone, each and every one of you for coming in today and showing your respects for this day of mourning. I come from a very strong family up in the very northernmost part of Australia, Gurang Yarakanu country. I'm a Waimara. My family fought very fiercely against the Kennedy Drive that went up through the Cape. My great-grandfather resisted one of the most meanest, nastiest, evil people on this earth, Jardine. My people fell, my ancestors, my ancestors shed blood. Our women, young children and men were slaughtered. They were made as slaves. This is nothing new, as we've all been hearing today from all of our aunties and uncles and, you know, all the people that have been speaking today. I want to pay my respects to my people that have gone before us, that have been able to allow 
me to be standing here today. And I really want to acknowledge the elders that are still here, still fighting. That fire that continues to burn. The love of our identity, of our Aboriginality. It is so deep-seated within us, you can't explain it. It is just a feeling. It is something within your soul that you feel and that you do. Today I see that in a lot of young people. I want to acknowledge all the young people here today. Let's give a big round of applause for all the young ones here today. They are our future. They are going to be our future leaders and it is important that we make them a part of our future, of Australia, because one day they are going to be standing right here in this spot in the next 30 years when we're probably going to be old and frail. So it is important that we keep our little people, our young bummers, in with, up with the times, up with all of the issues and all the atrocities, all of this colonistic uh, practices that are still continuing today. We need to make sure our young people are involved and we put that fire back in them. Thank you. Always was, always will be.